Hello viewers, we are going to make a beautiful magic using timer module. Before that, we have to understand one of its applications which I have mentioned in the video about timer, the PWM application. Today, we are going to create a PWM signal using the timer module. From this video onwards, I have decided to do all the projects into two videos. In first video, I will demonstrate on how to do the project. And in the second video, I will be explaining the code and HTML data cube configuration so that those who are not interested to watch the explanation can view the first video only. So let's dive into the project. As usual, I have launched the HTML data cube ID to create a new project right click here and under new click on HTML data project. Since I have the HTML data G474 nuclear board with me, click on board selector and type G474. Yes, we have got the board. We can select that and click next and typing a project name timer ch pwm ch I meant for channel. Okay, let's click on finish. Yeah, initialize all peripherals. Click yes. We are going to generate the pwm signal on our LED pin. So click on PF5 and select team 2 ch1. Team 2 ch1 means we are selecting timer 2 channel 1. Timer 2 is a general purpose timer. So we are selecting that for pwm generation. Now go to system core and then under RCC, we can verify the clock sources. Yeah, you can keep as it is. Now go to timers. We can configure the timer channels. Now click on team 2. Select the clock source as internal clock. In the timer channel, we can select PWM generation channel 1. In the parameter settings down below, we have to fill the timer settings. I have desired to generate 1 millisecond time period signal. And using that, we can generate 50 or 25% duty cycle waveform. To generate 1 millisecond time base and with a timer clock of 85 megahertz, Let's find out the prescaler and ARR value. I'm trying different values for prescaler so that ARR value should be less than 65,535. Perfect. Prescaler is 1 and ARR should be 1 less than 42,500. We can fill these values here. Enable auto reload preload. In the PWM generation mode, select PWM mode 1. Now go to clock configuration. Our HCLK should be 85 megahertz. Type the clock value and just press enter. This purple color is meant that there are some issues in the clock circuit. So click on resolve clock issues and STM cube will resolve that for us. Now sys clock become 85 MHz but HCLK got reduced. We can correct that and again just uh, press enter. Timer 2 channel is connected to APB2 bus. So here you can see that timer clock is set as 85 MHz as we required. Now go to project manager, keep the default settings and click on save button. Click yes as we need to generate the code. Okay, so we got the generated code in front of us. Now let's start coding. First we can start the PWM module using this uh, HL function. First argument is as usual timer handle. We have declared that here in the global section. Next is timer output channel where we need to generate the waveform. So it is timer channel 1. In case if any error comes, we can handle using this guard of code. If anything went wrong, this will be diverted into error handler function. I am writing an infinite while loop to keep the program stuck in this loop upon an error. We can go to the main function again. Next we have to define the duty cycle we want. We are using the compare property of the timer module here. Let's write the function first, then I can explain. HL team set compare. First argument is timer handle. Next is timer channel. So it is timer channel 1. Next argument is a duty cycle parameter. So we know our timer rolls back to zero when it reaches 42,500. If we want a 50% duty cycle, we have to define 50% of error value in the capture compare register. So here it is uh, 21250, right? Let's write that value here. This delay function is not required here in this program. I will explain about this in the next PWM project. So that's it about the coding part. Let's build the program. No errors. Yeah. Let's debug it either by clicking here or you can right click on the project and select debuggers STM32 application. Keep default settings. Now just click OK. I'm clicking on the play button. Now we can open the logic analyzer window. I'm using this first time for a project. OK. I have done an unboxing video of this device. This is a very good device for those who don't want to spend a lot of money for a signal analyzer like a oscilloscope or DSO. Okay, 
I have already connected the logic analyzer channel inputs to the timer channel output of the Nucleo board. You can verify your connection as shown on the screen. Now we can click on the start button. Yeah, we got enough measurements. Click on stop button now. Just double click on the screen to zoom the view. It is showing 0.4989 millisecond or just 0.5 millisecond for the pulse width. Frequency is 1.002 kHz and the timer period is 0.9977 millisecond close to 1 millisecond. Since we configured for 50% duty cycle, this is what we need, right? 50% to 1 millisecond is 0.5 millisecond. There is a small error in all readings. We can reduce that further. I will explain that in the last part of this video, okay? We can manually verify the measurements using the cursors also. It is getting close to 1 millisecond for the time period. Now we can go back to the code. Every time writing the hard-coded period value to find out the duty cycle is not a good coding practice. Let's use the period variable here. We have already defined the period value in the timer init function, isn't it? 40 to 4 double nine, which is 1 less than 40 to 500. You have doubt? It is the same value as uh, we can see in the Excel sheet. Ha! Ah, okay. Now we can see by configuring for 25% duty cycle. For that, we can write the code in this way. Any doubt? I am removing this unnecessary delay function from here. So let's quickly build and debug. I am clicking on the start button. Stop. Let's zoom it. So here pulse width is 0.2495 millisecond. So it is 25% duty cycle. Great. We have done that. By increasing the timer clock, we can increase the PWM resolution. Thereby we can achieve that almost accurate pulse width. So let's do that. Open the STM cube file or that .ioc file which you can see on the sidebar. In the clock configuration window, set the clock value as 170 MHz. Oh, it is set as 150 MHz. Okay, we can increase the PLL output by reducing the PLLM divider. Instead of divide by 8, we can just select uh, divide by 4. And in the multiplayer, I am selecting 85. And in the R divider, I am selecting 4 instead of 2. Now we can click on resolve clock issues. Yes, perfect. We got 170 megahertz as H clock. Next, we have to modify the prescaler and error value also. Let's go to the timer configuration section. We can see value given to prescaler. Timer clock is 170 megahertz. Time base required is 1 millisecond. So we got prescaler as 2 and error value 56,667 minus 1. Now let's generate the code by saving this. No need to change the code. Let's build and debug it. We can click on the start button. Enough simulations. Just click on stop button. Zoom it. Yes. Now we see exactly 0.25 millisecond. Exactly 25% duty cycle. We can measure the period using cursor also. Great. Exactly 1 millisecond. Perfect. Hope you have understood the concept. These are our parameter values for your reference. You can change the duty cycle to different values by changing this. So just with two lines of code, we have generated a PWM signal. It is that simple. So I will come again with the code explanation part soon and we will see several possibilities with the PWM application of timer module in upcoming sessions. Thank you for your support and stay healthy and stay happy. Bye.